today. We've got Shannon joining us today. You can't see her just yet, but you will in a moment. If you want to check her out, I've got her Instagram linked in the description below. And today we're going for a little bit more simple of a setup than I've done in the past. As I look around and there's three lights and a reflector already, it might not be too simple, but I'm trying to focus mostly on the use of one light today. So real quick to describe the setup, we've got an overhead Explorer 600 Pro with the beauty dish, 34 inch beauty dish. That's just acting as my background light. Then as my key light, I've got a 60 inch quick octa. So just one big soft box. That's also on an 8600 Pro. And then in the back, I've got a strip box, which I'm not even sure if I'm gonna use yet. I've just got it positioned in case I wanna add it. And then we do have one of the uh, Bowflector style reflectors or Westcott highlighters, whatever you want to call it. This is still Savvy's uh, third party one that I'm not sure of the name of the, how to pronounce the name of the brand, but we've got one of those that I might pull in and out. So I'm just going to get started. Now, one quick thing I am working alone today. So, producer Alex is off shooting a wedding today. So, I've got no help. So, for the most part, I'm going to be leaving it on the overhead camera just so you can see the behind the scenes. And yeah, that's all I got for you. Alright, starting out, I forgot, you're not looking at me anymore. Starting out, I'm getting around F4, ISO 100, 1 of a second, gives me a black shot, just so you guys can see it real quick. That's our starting point, and we're going to work around with each light. A light right here. I'm going to start at, start at an eighth. Good, just a little too bright. I don't know, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Like like that? Yeah. Cool. Good, that is just about perfect. And I do want a little bit of a rim light. So that's my C-Light back there, it's a QS600 Mark II. We're gonna try 1 16th, probably too high. Yeah, too bright, go down to 1 32nd. And I'm just going to move it a little bit because it's still a little too bright. towards me just a touch more. See these. Good. Turning down the light just uh, two thirds of a stop and then opening up one third. Perfect. And now I don't even have that background light on right now and I I love how the background looks, so I'm just going to go with this for a while. All right. Now it's all about you. Stop talking to the YouTubes. Do me a favor, group your hair together on the right. I like hearing what to do with the hair. Yeah. I'm always aware of that, and half the time drivers don't think about it, I'm like, please tell me if I need to do something with my hair. My worst enemy is flyaways. <laughs> like, retouching yeah. flyaways is a nightmare, so... Feel free to tell me if I need to do something with that. Yeah. Oh, this looks really good. Get me in close. Okay, push that head forward a little bit, yep. That was excellent. Let their eye, yeah, keep that position, let the eyes fall away, hold that. Good, maybe look off to your left a little bit. Awesome. It's so good. Okay, on the left, your hair on the left. Oh, it's all gone now. All right. <laughs> I 
Yeah. Let <laughs> me read your mind, don't worry. <laughs> Alright, we're going to put more weight on the right hip and, and um, kind of keep that left shoulder high. Yeah. Chin up a little bit more. Let's see what the light looks there. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot too. I think bring your kind of hold that position, but bring your right hand maybe like on maybe more in here. Yeah, there we go. So we can see the shape more. Good looking up. Adjustment to my leg here. That's how long have you been shooting for? Almost a decade. Wow. Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Certain mile and mine. Wow. It's been a while, I know. It, it's weird to say that now, right? Like it is. Because it simultaneously feels like just yesterday. Yeah, no, I, yeah, definitely. I get it. I have uh for the most part, for the past eight years, like right when I got interested in photography, I immediately became an assistant for a wedding photographer. Yeah. And then I have pretty much operated only in wedding photography for almost my entire career. Okay. Um, only last fall did I really start folk. I always did other stuff, you know, I did portraits here and there, I've rented studios, I've always done headshots, stuff like that. but. Only last fall did I like really dive into uh, editorial photography, and now that's like pretty much the main thing that I'm doing. I've done 140 shoot editorial shoots for Oakland since October. That's right, you see your photo. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting diversion. You know, <laughs> I, I love weddings. Yeah. I like, absolutely love weddings. Yeah, I was I always happy in that career. A lot of wedding photographers don't love weddings. So no, a lot of people. I think a lot of people. Uh, get really stressed out about how grandiose the event is, and I have no emotional attachment to that. And while I can see that it's beautiful and important and everything, it doesn't stress me out. Gotcha. So I feel like I like philosophically, I'm just like meant, or psychologically, I'm just meant for wedding photography. I gotcha. All right, let me try this. First one's just checking the light. Don't worry too much about this one. Okay, got a little bit brighter. Feels a little bit too much. So, just a break for YouTube. I'm seeing on the right side of her face, it's a little too bright. So I got too much light coming around, which is partially the reflector bouncing back up, and partially how much I have this light feathered. So I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. That should give me a stronger shadow now. Check. Lots of shit. Or just completely <laughs> ruin my shot. What just happened? Oh, that's one thing I hate about this lens. I accidentally hit this zoom, this uh, f-stop ring all the time, and I was just shooting at f14 and didn't even realize it. Interesting. The f-stop is on the lens. Yeah, it's, like and I hate that it's in two spots. Like I've shot on um, Fuji cameras where it was there, and I liked that, but it's on both, and it's not on all lenses. So I can't really adapt to it right. because I forget it's there when I'm using right. other lenses. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. You do photography too? I do. Dropped f-stop right there. <laughs> That's awesome. I do. I do a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back in business. I think, I think I'm at the exposure I was at. Let's do one quick test just to check that lighting. Still a little too bright. All right. Hey, 
There we go. I'm finally getting the shadow that I want on the right side of her face. So we're getting a little bit more dark, a little bit more depth on that right side of her face. Looks really good. And I'm double checking for detail in her shirt. Uh -oh. Still looks like I got it all, but we're going to we're going to go uh, one third down on both of our lights just to make sure that I'm not clipping any of those highlight details. Shane, we're back in business. Come really close for these. Add more deeps there in the lens here. Let's see how put how much I could push that 85. That looks fantastic. So what do you like to shoot? Oh, you're in my heart. Hold on. <laughs> Pause. Want to hold it? Plant that left hand right on the knee. Take the left arm and bring it across the body right here. And then rotate a little more to your left. Good. I love your posing rhythm. It's like perfectly aligns with my speed, my shooting speed. Thank you. Like I said. Generally pose, and then I appreciate the feedback when appropriate. Well, you're killing it, so you're not hearing anything from me right now. I'm gonna switch stuff up a little bit though. Ooh, I really like that last one. I did too. Now, as I'm moving stuff, what do you typically like to shoot? <sighs> uh, I do love landscape, I like port portrait. It's just finding people to shoot is sometimes difficult. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like sometimes you can't, it's it's humbling when you're actually doing this full time as a career and then other times you literally just can't find people to give a session away for, mm -hmm. you know, and like new people to work with and stuff. So I've always found that like peculiar. Yeah. I, a friend who I, her and I modeled together and she stopped modeling and she started doing some photography she kind of stopped doing that too, I think, but her and I shot on Monday where we both like shot each other. Uh -huh. uh, and it was so much fun. Like, yeah. I haven't gotten to do that in forever, so it was exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm never in, in front of the camera. Er, in front of the camera. Yeah, <laughs> ever. It's funny, I look at my Facebook and I'm just like, I haven't even taken like a picture with my wife since last August when we went to, uh, <laughs> when we went to uh, Utah for a day. Or we went to Zion National Park one day, and like that's like the last photo that I remember taking of us too. Some, I do it so much for fun and for work that sometimes it's the last thing I want to do. Check that hair it looks good. You guys see as I brought that light around. We got an even deeper shadow on the right side of her face right now. So right now we're kind of in that Rembrandt zone. Never a bad thing. I think I'm gonna pump up that backlight just a third stop. I'm also gonna now activate the background light, the overhead light. I'm gonna start at 164th. There we go. See that background just lightened up a little bit. Actually, keep that. Lean into me. Yep, right there. Looking left for a few. Hold that. See this close. a little higher.
I gotta say, my description of the makeup is like exactly what I was envisioning. God, I'm glad. Yeah, Miles is great. I'll give you her Instagram so you can tag her and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I love her. Miles. Awesome. Where's she out of? Ferndale. She does makeup and photography. Oh, cool. Yeah. I love when people, I don't know, learn makeup. This like sounds ridiculous, but I don't know. Like, A, I think I already know what I'm looking for to a degree that I have like visions in yeah. mind. Uh, B, like I get the idea of retouching and applying. So I feel like now it's just like the actual physical thing and then, you know, understanding applications. There's so much to it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But I actually think it'd be helpful to learn. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and just being able to do it myself, like not having to rely on anybody. But, like, yeah. Who has time to learn? I, I, learned I was like, alright, so he wanted smoky and, you know, like kind of a darker lip, but have fun with it and play with it. And mm -hmm. she was great. She's like, do you trust me? I was like, I trust you. That's the other it. thing, so, too. When it comes to like creative professionals, just let them be and creative. I was like, I trust you. Yeah. She's like, I think I need some pop. I had some gold. So let's do it. Yeah. So. Perfect. And gold goes really well with your hair. Yeah, and I think it works well with the, the black that we're working with. Yeah. Good tunnel, so you know, I just do that. Like that. Looking to your left, like straight in the head for one. Yeah, right there, right there. Perfect. Now it goes. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Those are awesome. All right, what do I want to change? Like, so indecisive about the gray in the background. Like, if I want it brighter or darker, I think it's, like, perfect right now, though. But, yeah, for you guys watching, this is a pain to set up, this overhead style. But it's so nice because it just gets rid of any shadows. You've pretty much got one wide light source hitting everything. You've got it kind of filling the back end. One of the things you can do with it, just how you position it, it is right on top of the ceiling. So, you be really careful here. Don't want this swimming down and injuring Shannon. So I'm going to bring it forward a little bit more. It's going to kind of give us this overhead light too. Now we might see a tiny shadow in the background. I'm not quite sure. I don't really think so because we've got the softbox facing feathered so far to the left. I'm going to ask YouTube if they can name the song that's playing. Okay. Because then I know whether I have to worry about it. No problem. Uh, so yeah, you guys watching, can you hear the song that's playing? Because I want a chance to have music. Oh, and as it goes for settings, so yeah, you guys watching, can you, I will be telling you guys, I will be telling you guys and breaking and talking settings for you guys a little bit, um, so I will, I'll take those breaks in between just so I can answer questions for you, but again, working solo right now, so I can't really read the chat, but thanks for everybody who's watching. What brand tethering cord am I using? I'll give you guys a few quick questions. Do you mind? No, go for okay. it. A um, few quick questions. The tethering cord, I am using the, uh, the Tether Tools default one. It's nothing special. I would just opt for a regular USB Type-C or Thunderbolt cable. Is the eye lighter doing anything more on the face? Not so much on the eyes right now. It's just kind of giving me a little bit of kick under the jaw. Uh, not focused so much on the eyes. I like keeping those dark right now, but I could pull those back a little bit. What's up, Brazil? Greetings, Lord Hall of House Hall. What's up? Love that shot preview overlay, freaking sweet. I'm gonna do that for my stream too. Yeah, it's really nice. 
really nice. Does the light on the background bring more challenges to control your light settings? Uh, no, it, it actually it makes it a little bit easier to uh, control that background. Crap, somebody can hear it. I'm going to go down one more step. No problem. I said, let me get rid of it. It's okay. Uh, we're talking anyways. It's not like it's super awkward. Different if it was just yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, nice. Trying to avoid getting uh, getting taken down by YouTube right now. But at the same time, uh, you know, I wanted to have something to listen to. She's crushing it right now, and I attribute it to Rush. I mean, it's obviously because of Rush. Background music, yeah. Do they make an extension head for the 400 Pro? No, not yet. Okay, I'm caught up. I'm going back to shooting for a bit. How do you shoot if it's not rush? Right? Yeah. You do anything but rush. All right. Okay. So again, we uh, we brought that overhead light closer. Let's just see where that gets us. You can see, kind of on the top of her head, we've got a little bit more light, especially like on the skin right around her head. I'm gonna bring it even more forward, though. And we've also got a darker background now. And if you guys want to see the the Bowflector highlighter thing do more work, I'm just gonna get it a little closer to her. And we're gonna punch in on these. I'm just gonna do a quick test to comment on real quick. So now you see on the bottom of her eye, we now have like the lower catch light. We can emphasize this even more if I bring this light forward a little bit to get this light in her eye. I kind of like the dark eyes, but I'll show you guys more catch light style shots. Bring this around. Good, good. So now we've got this light hitting in the face, also bouncing off and upwards, and then this is giving us a top down, gonna fill in her right shoulder, and we still have that kicker back there, separating her dark hair from the background. I see everything is just bright. Lean in a little bit more forward. Now we should see the highlighter more. Yep, you can see both catch lights now. Bring it a touch closer. Now you see we have a lot less depth. It's just kind of bright. Let me go back to one of these eye ones. You can see both those catch lights. Her eyes are so much brighter now. But again, kind of like the smokiness more and like the darker eyes. We've got a lot of brights in this image, so I think the eyes kind of contrast better when it's darker. See what I mean? My soundtrack? <laughs> Classic rock to Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to do a few more just really close up beauty shots in this look, and then I think I'm going to do a new switch. Okay. 
I'm going to bring this back just because I don't want that whole face to be bright here again. Going back to the background. I don't even know if you guys can see it right now. I'm also going to switch lenses. I'm going to go to my 105 millimeter. I think I can get a little bit, uh, a little bit closer. I brought the light way closer, so this is probably going to be way too bright. Yep. So A light, we're going down. I'm going to try 1 1 plus 0.3. B light, my background. I like the color of my background right now. I'm actually going to go up a third stop, make it a touch brighter. Let's see what that looks like. So these are all like here up. Oh, yeah, you can see. <laughs> okay, we went a little too aggressive on the uh, A light. Settle on 164 plus 0.3. Group that here on the left again. Got one part coming up. Sorry, you can look off. Bring that left hand up. Like this side of the hair here. Is it you're just pulling that hair back a touch? Yep. Good. I like those. Yeah. These make your. So, here, guys, you can see it's actually pretty cool because the highlighter catch light is kind of uh, a little bit more significant than the uh, catch light from the softbox itself. It also really works well for the dewiness of her makeup. Hold that. Let's see how close I can get here. One more, I just want to make sure I get both hands in the frame. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Ready to change it a look too? Yep. All right. I will answer questions in the meantime. All right. So I want to change the head. All right, guys. I am uh, now tuning in for any questions. Looks like if I keep this pause, I don't actually get my updated chat. So I guess I have to keep this playing but muted. So sorry about that. If there's uh, any new questions, go ahead and let me know. Oh, here I got all the... Uh... Second screen is covering your gear. I don't think... I don't think it should be. No, you can see everything that I'm using in the shoot. Where'd you get that plastic thing on the ground? What's the plastic thing on the ground? Let me look real quick. Oh, it's just a 4x8 piece of plexi. You can get that at like uh, Home Depot. That's just to make sure that background doesn't move around much. No plexi, plastic, I don't even know what the material is. But, um... I don't know if Savvy's watching, maybe Savvy can comment on where he got that specific one from. But yeah, it's just nice, evens out the weight so that uh, it's not going around anywhere. Otherwise, um, because we have paper on top of carpet, if somebody just moves around the least bit, it can really easily like crinkle and twist the background. So that just kind of gives you this really flat surface area, holds the backdrop in place. It uh, doesn't really matter for these close-ups that we're doing, but if we were to... A shift to like halves or full length where we're going to see that bottom rounded corner of the backdrop 
that's when uh, the plexiglass is going to save us. And we're also planning on doing some standing stuff later, so definitely want uh, want that to work for us later. Love your lighting modifier reviews. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm also I'm also probably not going to probably not going to switch from shooting portraits today because uh, as you guys know I have two different formats here on OBS one for landscapes and one for portraits and uh, if I switch to portraits then it gets all or I'm sorry if I switch to landscape actually landscape it still displays the portrait pretty well but I don't know I think everything that we're doing in the studio today I'll probably keep portraits. Uh, the comment about the screen was when we first started watching. Thanks. Okay. Um, I do love the live stream setup. Are you using OBS? Yes, I have a very in-depth video on my entire live stream setup and how we accomplish this. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. It's um, I don't know, maybe not simple. There's three cameras going, one here, one there that I'm not really using today. And then the overhead, of course. Oh, you guys can't see right all when we got that light modifier there. <laughs> this is useless. Um, yeah, so we got three cameras going into a Roland. Then the Roland goes into a capture card on the computer. And then the MacBook goes into a separate capture card. And then OBS, we can kind of play with the overlays from there. But tethering is what really makes this work nicely. Okay, we are ready for look number two, so I'm going back to it. Will you do any post-processing on the pictures? Absolutely, like this is just the capture, obviously we can't post-process live. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in like a more editing style videos. I don't know if you also know that Alex edits a majority of my work, so that may, might be something that he would do instead of me. Um, I can't officially cannot keep up with all of my editing, so uh, Alex is doing most of it these days, which allows me to shoot more and make more YouTube videos. Sorry, this is off top, but if you find a good way to mount the Flashpoint Lion X on a Bowman's mop. No, I have not found a good way, um, and yeah, currently can't think of anything other than using an old hot shoe mount. I'm really annoyed that Godox did not release a um, an updated bracket for it, like when it came out, Godox needs to quit doing that. They need to make all their future accessories that they plan for products, they need to just release that stuff with their lights because it's getting really annoying to own these products but not be able to use them well because they don't have the proper accessories yet. Okay, going back to shooting for a bit. So now that she has black on, I don't want my background to be so bright. I'm sorry, I don't want my background to be so <laughs> dark. Say, right, we want me to just blend right <laughs> in, right? Just a floating head. <laughs> I'm just talking. Interesting, that'll be a... <laughs> just your skin yeah, shows. It's yeah. <laughs> the only thing you can see is your skin. Can you see your hair? Just, just can't my see head, anything. just my arms. Like these floating body parts, that could be a cool statement piece. We can try it. <laughs> no backlight, nothing. All right. Looks like you guys can see again. All right. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off my A light and my kicker, and I'm going to focus on the background color. And I think we're going to drop this. Still too dark. Just a shadow. Up to 1 16th. That's pretty good right there, minus that, uh... Actually, I kind of like that hair light shape that's coming in right there. I just don't like the highlight on her collarbone. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Try to get the 
a little deeper on the background. There's, there's your statement piece. That's pretty good right there. The only thing I dislike is that uh, it's a little dead in the middle. Like it's it's bright, darker, and then bright again on the bottom. So I think we need to change the angle a little bit here. Can't really get above this thing right now, so instead you guys just get to watch me struggle trying to twist this thing with all this weight on it. Any help? Um, I don't know if there's anything. Could do. Uh, let's try that. Hopefully that opens up the middle a bit. It's probably still going to be a little bright at the top, just because it's obviously closer to the light. got it tilted more, I'm just going to try to bring it closer here and hopefully we still aren't playing here. So as we pull it back, I don't even know if you guys can hear me from way over there, but if we, uh, as we pull it back that just means that we're kind of equalizing the values because we are even making the distance between the different points on the backdrop a little bit more even. Okay. Bam. Let's see if we can even see those highlights once we add the A light, because otherwise I'm comfortable with this. A light's going to probably be a touch too dark. Yep. So I'm going up two thirds of a stop. I'm at 132nd on my A light. At 132nd on my B light. Now I don't really notice that uh, highlight on her so much, especially right now when we up this light a little bit more. That looks really good. But we do want a little, we do want a touch of fill. So I'm going to go up one third, one more third of a stop. For a reflector that's also easy to set up. Are you comfortable? Yeah. <laughs> or are you just holding a pose, the longest pose ever? It's not uncomfortable. I'm super flexible though. I'm an awful at Ukraine Jiu Jitsu because of it. You have an awful what? I studied Jiu Jitsu. Really? Yes, in case are when you are the person that's being like a tech or practice then. Okay. So I'm an awful okay, because I'm super flexible. So moves that would normally Something like yes, yeah, cement or hurt people don't always for me because I can bend in weird like ways and I'm fine with that. That's functional. So I am working I'm like I've been nursing my uh, my left ankle for the longest time. Because I screwed it up playing basketball. I'm just going to cut off my foot at this point. Yeah? I went, Easy solution. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I went salsa dancing in February and I wore new shoes that I thought I'd broken that day. Uh -huh. And apparently I didn't break them in enough. They, I broke them in enough, they didn't cause blisters. I didn't break them in enough, though, to where they, they like rubbed into my heel bad enough that, uh -huh. like, wearing anything that has pressure on it now hurts my foot. I thought it was a soft tissue bruise, mm -hmm. but it's been three months and so I'm starting to worry time. if it's more. I need to go to the doctor's when I get some time. Maybe, I don't know, I think I'm just going to cut it off. It's the easiest way. I don't well, see any other option. I've had about an equal time with uh, with, with mine. I, I thought I was like We could come off together. Yeah, let's just saw each other's off. <laughs> Um, reflector, 
doing a little bit, but it's still not quite there. We're going to get it a little bit closer. I thought I was going to have to cut off my other leg, too, because I went, uh, I went to Denver in April and didn't, like, hike, hike up mountains, but I, like, you know, walked some trails on the mountains. Yeah, and elevated wear, hikes. Yeah, and couldn't wear the tennis shoes because they were too tight for my feet, so I wore my flats. Uh, that were the ones I was trying to replace because they're big enough and loose enough and ended up like messing up my knee so I thought I had to cut that off too but that got better. That sounds brutal. I went up uh, Observation Point in Zion in a pair of Ultra Boosts and destroyed them. Alright, there we go. I got the light that I'm looking for. It's filled in just enough now. Only thing is I might... No, I'm not going to lower it. Let me just have you bring your hair back on the left side a little bit. It's creating a bit of a shadow in your eye. Good. Let's get this pose that you've been holding for 20 minutes. This might look good standing too. Look, so I can change the pose if you want. Uh, look over your left shoulder. And then pull your shoulder blades back. Turn a little bit that way, right up there, perfect. Can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you pull down, just because we've got a lot of uh, little folds right there in the middle of it. I'll press, yeah. Is it helping? Because it's just kind of folds like that. Yeah. Rotate the body even more away from me, and then head back towards me. There we go. Good. All right, yeah, let's shift. Come back towards me a little bit, and let's shift with uh, the hands. Actually, kind of like with like the right hand. I still want to see it, so I know you have an arm, but right there it looks good. I cut that off, too. Yeah. It's the nice thing. You're going to be a quadriplegic by the time we're done here. Okay, now, because of her back arm, it looks like way too dark right now, so now I'm going to introduce that kicker light again, see what 164th looks like. Go a little brighter, 132nd. There we go. Ooh, I like the shoulder. I might. I'm gonna switch my whole lighting setup for the shoulder of that dress. I just now noticed it. The bow. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're gonna flip everything 180. I know. I was facing this way because where the light was, <laughs> but the bow is on this shoulder. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'm gonna switch the position of this light. I'm going to go up higher, so this is going to give us more shadow, more drama underneath the eyes. There's a whole reason I asked Shannon to get smoky out. like this, make sure your light is over the leg, that way it doesn't fall forward, and give your model another limb to cut off. So if you guys are watching from right there, the whole, the center of the softbox is still way in front of her, so even though we're overhead, we're still going to get a lot of bounce light onto the front of her.
Now we can show off the bow. Let's see where we're at. Good. Dark under the eyes. Perfect. Not too dark under the jaw. Just gonna bring that reflector a touch closer. Again. Let's start with a few close-ups, like bring that bow even more towards me. Yeah, right over that shoulder. Maybe bring the right hand up onto that so we got something to break up all the dark spots. A little bit more relaxed with the hand. There we go. The hair fell on awesome right there. What? The hair fell down like perfectly on the shoulder. And I've not let go of eye autofocus since we started. Just looking at over the image like in detail. I love what it's doing on her cheekbones. I like where it's at under the eye. It's just a little bright on the top of the head to me. So I think I'm going to bring it even a bit more forward or feather a bit more right. You can also try dropping the B light. That, that uh, overhead light might be hitting her a little bit too. So we're just going to close that in a touch. Especially since we've got a lighter now. Okay, hold on. I feathered that way too much. That light was straight up pointing at me, not her. Now, quick way I can test, oh, there we go. See how much darker her hair got right there? So now her face, the attention to her face pops out way more. Good. Almost slip? Yep. Good. Let me see what happened. Turn towards that other side, towards that reflector for me for a second. Let's see what happens. I still kind of like it when she turns away from the light and into the reflector more. I think I could use a touch more drama. So I'm going to kick up the A light and I'm going to flip the reflector to white. That's good. I really like how under the eyes look right now. This just looks, this looks perfect to me. Hold on, I don't want to come in on that one. Thank you.
concomos. What if you get more off the stool exactly so you can kind of, yeah, post down. There we go. You do a, you do a pull back real quick as her legs are right on top of the C stand. It's a good behind the scenes. Hold that. Rotate, rotate a little more to the right with the head. There you go. Elbow up a bit, bit, bit more. There we go. That looks great. Do me a favor. Um, actually, this might just be a matter of. We're going to have you lean forward, but you're already barely on the stool. <laughs> Ask more of you. Elbow higher, elbow higher. Twist the knees towards me a little bit more. There you go, right about there. Good. Look at that. See those very Vanity Fair thing. Mm -hmm. Just needs a uh, needs a instead of a solid backdrop, if it had a textured one. Uh huh. Yeah. Which is so weird because like I, I I like hated those <laughs> up until very recently. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I kind of want one of these again. What made you want one? I used one again and I loved it like very temporarily. I don't know why. I don't know what made me swear them off other than the fact that they were used for decades, so they felt a little uh, a little classic, if you will. Yeah, yeah but That's now. That's way of saying it. Yeah. Now seeing them again, I'm like, I see their purpose. Alright. Coming my waist up now. Oh, I'm coming close for that. See how the light looks when we do that? That's good. A few more looking off yet. Keep the right hand across the shoulder, yep. That's exactly what I wanted. That's perfect. Um, actually, hold on, one little thing. Bring the left arm out just so I see your body between the arm. Like this um, out or like? Uh, yeah, so maybe bent. There we go, right there. Good, left arm, uh, I'm sorry, right arm up on the shoulder a bit more. There we go, right there. Looking off for a few. Coming in close. Relax that right hand too. Keep everything else the same. Let's drop the right hand. Yeah. That's good, right to the wrist.
maybe minus, I don't know. I like the hair. I think I want more. more. Yeah, bring the hair back in the front and the left. Yeah. I like the head position right there. Good. Definitely love it. Yeah. I like it. Should we... I feel like it's. I can just barely see your ear. That I'd either want to see it... Cut that off, too. Yeah, cut that off. It's gone. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I either want to see it. Both because I love this head position. Closer. And now do some with that completely covered. There we go. That's the top look now. You know, I was an owl. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to tell you that. Secret. Yeah. Go to our jumper, or our All right, pants. pants. Let's do it. A jumper. There's no such thing as a jumper, is there? I'm making up for There is, is there? such thing as a jumper, but I don't I have think it. I was mentally thinking romper, because those are like... Jumpers and rompers, I think, are the same thing, but I don't own them. Alex, what are you doing? Actually commenting while you're at a wedding. Bop, bop, bop. I'm annoyed about that too. Oh yeah, Aaron, totally, definitely annoying. Brian did this. I got that 8600 based on your recommendation. Hope you enjoy it, man. Still an awesome light. Um, I know everybody for the past year or so has been talking about the Pro, but that 8600, the original, is an exceptional value. Switch cameras, where's your producer? I'm back. Not my own producer. Ah. Do you prefer white or silver from the reflector? Find that silver provides more drama. Depends what you mean by drama. Yes, a silver reflector is going to be more specular, more contrasty light. But by flipping to the white, I can create less light, which means my ratio between my key light and my fill light now has more drama. So um, yeah, I mean, it's completely based on like what you're, what you're defining as drama, whether it's specularity or a increase in the lighting ratio. Da, da, da. Let me see what else is going on. Hopefully I'm not showing my desktop as I log into Facebook. Shit. Password you answered is, or entered is incorrect. I forgot my Google pass or Facebook password. Can't even log in. I was gonna see what people are saying on the uh, Facebook live stream, but unfortunately, I can't see that right now. 8400 Pro or 8600 Pro? Um, I mean, if you need power, 600. If you prefer portability, 400. It's kind of the argument with all these lights. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like the 400 Pro a little bit more right now than the 600 Pro when I'm, when I'm using it on location. In studio, it's relevant. That looks great. Um, if you want to click through, you can. If you, they're just the back arrow. Yeah, it's going to change on the last year, but it doesn't matter what they, they can, they can see a redo on all of them. It's not changing it. What's going on AP Studios? Thanks for tuning in. Is that changing? Oh, this is delayed. It oh, will. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it will. Um, just going through, revisiting the shots. What strobe is on the overhead softbox? Overhead softbox is the, um, it's still an 8600 Pro, but it's just got the extension head on it because it's boomed, and we want to keep it lightweight up there. But yeah, back to 400 Pro. 400 Pro to me is all the power I really need outside when I'm photographing one or two people. 600 Pro, if you're doing like 
teens or something where you need to get more distant, I think the 600 Pro would be more beneficial for you. So, yeah. Yeah, and like you said, portability is a priority. Then definitely go for the 400 Pro. It's a good deal smaller. So, 31 watching should be 31 likes. I agree, everybody. Hit that like button. <laughs> iPhone 7 says, man, wish me to be a photographer as you. Thank you, iPhone 7. I've never been complimented by an iPhone before. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to move to some, we're going to move to some full length one. So more lighting and entire body. Still going to try to do it with just the uh, key reflector and the background light. Should be pretty much it. Lighting tips are very useful. Good. I'm glad to see it. I, you know, this isn't like obviously this isn't a very short way to learn, but I think it's a really quality way to learn because you can see the really minor differences that I kind of see in my images that cause me and lead me to make changes live. And I, man, as she goes through all these, I just I love this whole set today. <laughs> this is just Good perfect. Good I like it too. That's some great stuff. Oh, you're going through the uh, horizontal ones? I was like, it looks so weird on here. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm also watching like so far. They were, I mean, they came off. I don't know if I would say I was just going through them. But. All right, one more question. We're going to go with William's question. Any advice on an issue I face with newly acquired 8400 Pro, the acquired bone speed ring from MagMod isn't matching the 8400 Pro. How can I fix that to use a mag box? Uh, William, I'll come back to that. In the meantime, can you explain how it's not fitting? Like, um, it, the bones mount attachment to the 8400 Pro isn't connecting, or your your bones mount attachment to the mag box is not connecting. Just clear that up, um, but it should fit. I mean, it's from mag box for bones, it should fit. And I'd maybe talk to them in the meantime about if they've had this issue before because Mag Magmod has excellent customer support. So they would definitely uh, probably be willing to send out another one if it's not something that they're hearing, they're experiencing with other devices. But for the most part, Codex or Bones is really, really standardized, um, and you shouldn't find too many, too many modifiers that are Bones that shouldn't fit unless it's something really old where they tended to be a little bit heavier duty. Into as part of your workflow at home, yes, where I actually sit down and retouch sometimes. Um, here, no, we don't have one. And uh, Alex uses not the Intuos for his retouching. He uses, it should be here unless he took it with him. Yeah, he has a uh, Huion, H-U-O-I-N. Oh no, here it is. Oh no, that's my other. I, I do have this uh, this trackpad at the studio, or not trackpad, but Wacom tablet, but I hate this one, as I've talked about in other videos. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Intuos Pro at home that uh, I, I do try to use quite a bit. I'm left-handed, so in order for natural brush movements, I, I have to use that. A mouse doesn't work for me. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna use the restroom real quick, and then we will continue shooting. I'm gonna take this mic off so you don't hear me tinkle.
want different shoes or are these shoes fine? I like those. Alright. like the additional height they give you. <laughs> I mean, I'll, the as rest are heels too, so they're all going to give me height. As if you're not tall enough. Sorry guys, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Yeah, I really love what we got. Yeah, you like them? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, there's some really great ones in there. Alright, back in business. I think I gotta go all the way to the end. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know the easiest way to do it, but apparently I had to just hold on. We shot so many. I'm just gonna scroll off. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hear that music. Alright, let me switch this up. I think I'm gonna bust out one of Savvy's big old reflectors here since we're doing full length. Try to keep this still right about eye level. We want the focus part of the light to be around her eyes. But for the most part, this is going to be a really wide spread of light. We're going to keep it back a little bit further. It's also going to be a little bit harder light, which is why I want the reflector. stuff in there just so I can position this stuff around you. Yeah. Where at? Um, as long as you're on the point C. We're going to be really close to uh, showing that top light with how tall she is. So guys, this is what I would call the the e-commerce setup. Which I think I mentioned briefly in my last stream. That this would be something I would go for if I was doing a lot of cataloging. Maybe if you're doing pure white. Something along that nature. Let me see if you guys can see the whole setup. You can. Alright. Alright, we're just going to restart with our lights. So I've got just the A on. We're going to switch lenses because this one's too long. I still want some compression to the background, so 85. Okay, just the A light. Pretty cool. It's actually nice and moody. Good contrast, good pop, a little dark on the background. Not surprising. I want to get, I'm going to go in a little bit more so I get a little bit more fall off and shadows created on her right side, or her left side, camera right side. Yep, 
and you should be able to face either way once we do this lighting setup. There we go, more contrast. It's exactly what we wanted. Maybe a bit too much. I want somewhere in between there. So basically the more I point it at the reflector instead of her, the more it's going to even the two light sources out. Good. Just going to increase the overall exposure, third stop, brighten it up a little bit, then we're going to work on the background light, which I forget if that's A or C, or B or C. It's B. Good. Again, still a little dark in the middle. We could go side lighting for this, like two lights, to get a perfect background. But because I'm not shooting for a catalog, I don't really mind. I'm going to do one more change. I'm going to switch my hair lights to this side. So I get a little kick in the back. I'm going to turn this one off. So this one you're probably not going to see too well with that big old reflector there. But I'm putting a strip light on the C-stand back here. Accentuate her clothing, her height. All right, let's see, we should be about there. So, just gonna do the strip light by itself in the back there. So, see light it might be a bit too bright. Yeah, I'm gonna take that down a little bit. This is all, I want this all to be really smooth and complementary, not really see the independent light sources. All right. Oops. All three on. There we go. Still a little too powerful on that kicker. Don't want it to be that visible. Kicker, rear light, hair light, whatever you want to call it. And one thing I'm running into is just that strip light in frame. So I'm just going to pull it back a little bit since I want it be a little bit darker anyway. All right, we're in business. Real quick, I just want you guys to see how close everything is. scenes. That could have been bad. Yeah, that way if it's not really making sense from the GoPro, there you can kind of see the details a little bit more clearly. Alright, I like that close hold that. And yeah, anything with these paints and everything, anything like really accentuated and Strong bends, perfect. Good. Spin that right knee even more.
Perfect. Rotate your hips away from me just a touch more. There you go. Let's keep that. Drop that right arm. Yep. I didn't think about it. Look back towards it, towards your right arm. Yep. And then just kind of wiggle it around so it's not so stiff. There we go. Good. Awesome. Keep that, but 180. Flip that towards the key light. Yep. So probably should adjust the hair too a little bit. Bring it back on the left side a touch. There we go. It's a little bunched up on the neck. And then just slide away from that leg just a little bit, like just keep the whole pose right there. Perfect. A little bit more space in between the legs so I see a gap in between it. There we go. Bring the hips back towards me a bit. There you go, right about there. Start going from the waist up. Alright, so now I'm kind of taking a low angle to accentuate the really long pants. As low of an angle as I can. If I go up any more, this is what I see. That's good. Hold that. Can you bring that right leg, uh, left, right leg back anymore? There we go. Right there. Let that twist a little bit more to your right. Well, I think I want to keep that pose. I think I want to even out the exposure a bit. So it's a little brighter on your other side. So I'm going to back this off. Push this in. Now the reflector is closer and the light is farther, which just means more balance overall. See how much smoother that shadow side is now, guys? Yep, keep working that way, I like that. Put more weight into the left hip. And then come back towards me with everything a little bit. Like point your toes more towards me, everything. There you go. Good. Well then I'm gonna come in for just a close crop. I'm going to switch lenses to my 50mm just so I can get even more, more significant like tilt and distortion. I see how much longer her legs look now because I'm closer, so anything that's closer to me is just gonna have is just gonna be more exaggerated. And whatever with all this stuff in the background will just crop it or retouch it out in post. Rather than move the whole lighting setup. I'm trying to put um, like step everything back and then really step forward with that right foot. Yeah. 
It's gonna just twist towards me, both toes. There you go, right there. Looking right. Looking to your right, yep. Tilt the head a little bit. Your legs look so long, don't they? They do. <laughs> yeah, I look super long in that photo. That looks crazy. I love it. And if I so if I were outdoors right now, guys, I would probably go like even more low. But I'll show you what happens in studio. Obviously, her head kind of intersects with that that background, but I, I love how that looks. It looks awesome. Um, you know what? I want to capture this. So let's let's have you back up a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna back up both of my legs. I got off my foot and leg. I'll be shorter. That's true. So then yeah, you don't have to worry about the get on with that. being too short. Get on with that whole thing. <laughs> Distance between me and the top of this. It's a bigger problem right now. I shouldn't have put it on the highest one, not the lowest one. This is true. You underestimated my height. I did. I did. How tall are you? Uh, 5'11 without heels. So you're like 6'3 right now? Probably something close to that. Alright, we backed everything up. We got a little bit more room to get a little lower. Left foot closer to me. I'm using every millimeter of breathing room I have here. Um, I know that, yeah, more across the body, perfect. We got plenty of crazy long leg photos. I'm gonna, switch one. I'm gonna try one more setup. I like everything that we got there. I'm gonna try this, uh, I'm gonna abandon this key light, or maybe I'll use it as a fill. But I'm gonna use just a strip box as a key light. Okay, so we took out took out that key light, the A light. I'm gonna turn that off to start. So now all I've got is the strip box on the right and the top light, which I'll move just so you guys can see it. So with this strip box as a key, we've got a very narrow light source. So her position is going to be like super key to how the light looks, how it falls on her. All right, we want brighter for that kicker. Obviously, this is our C light in the back. I call it a kicker, but it's because I'm so used to a strip box being a kicker, but it's actually our key light right now. Okay, brightened it up. Now, too bright, so I'm gonna bring that down just a touch, maybe two thirds of a stop. I'm gonna bring it even closer to her. Put in the middle of it at eye level, so the brightest spot is the face. 
Actually, we'll go slightly above her eye so we get a little bit more shadow in the eye. Just a tiny angle. Could go a little higher, actually. Hopefully, I can still keep that out of frame. Okay. Other thing is that I kind of like that bright spot. I'm going to twist this a bit more away from the background so it's a bit more contrasty on the front of her as well as just spilling less on the background. And then I am going to bring in this fill just so I can control how strong the shadows are, especially since I brought it in closer and it's going to be more dramatic. So we'll bring this as a fill. Now because I'm only going to fill in those shadows a little bit, I'm not too worried about any shadows or cross shadows that this is going to cause because it's going to be so much dimmer than our key light. So right now, B is my key light at 32, 1 32nd power plus 0.7. And let's just test with that in the background light. 12, that's good. So the other thing is as I move around her more and she twists a little bit more towards me, there you go, right there. We'll create stronger shadows. That's good. Love that. Now I'm just going to look real quick. I'm worried that I'm not getting all the all of the detail in the blacks there, so I'm just going to put a little pop of light from the A at 1 1 28th power. There we go, just enough that I can work it either direction now. I'm actually going to bring that back a little bit, or we'll just take it down to 1 2 56 because it's an Explorer 600 Pro. There we go, that is ideal. Now I think I just want my background light darker. So C, my background, we're going to bring that down to well, 1128. See what that looks like. Wrong light. B light is my background light. There we go. You see it? Pull the shoulders back. There you go. Alright, just separate the hands for a few. You can like move them to a different place, like maybe bring one up to the other. That's good actually. Okay. Alright, now just lean forward into the light so that your head's closer than your hands. Perfect. Good, rotate towards me a bit more. Good. It's still too strong. Okay, slide a bit more to um, like away from me, right there. Good. We're trying to feather a skirt box here, guys. Madness. This kind of looks like this is what I think of when I think of window light, actually, which is surprising because we're coming from a light source that is so much smaller than a window. Let's see how that looks. That's good. Just come closer. There we go. Maybe even a bit more. I still got room. There we go. Again, leaning into the light. Okay, bring that left hand like across to the right shoulder side. There we go. Turn a little bit more towards me just so I see both your eyes. Still looking away though. Do me a favor, give me one pet on the back side. Some flyaways, there we go. I keep those lips separated. I'm gonna do a little bit wider. Bend your right knee across your body. Uh, 
looks awesome. I don't know, on stream, on stream everything always looks like a half stop darker. So these are actually looking pretty good to me, but I'm going to brighten both my lights up a little bit. So this is probably more what I, what, what you guys are seeing now is more what I've been seeing for the last 10 minutes. Can we do one more thing? Yeah. Can we go back to the pencil skirt? Okay. And or the dress. Actually, the dress. Okay. That'll work really well with this slide. Okay. No? Okay. Okay. All right. This is kind of going to be what we talked about, where dark over dark and... <laughs> Just a floating head? Floating head. Almost. Anyways. <laughs> Alright, we're switching outfits one last time. I just think that, that the fit of the dress is going to complement this type of lighting style a little bit better. I think I always... The reflector against the wall is bleeding into the shot floor camera, right? I don't think, you're not saying that that reflector is affecting the image, is it? Do you like a catch light in your portraits? It depends. I like both. Sometimes I like the light high and for like some just kind of like depth to occur underneath the brow, which occasionally eliminates your catch light depending on the size of your light source. Um, but like here, I think the catch lights are kind of a necessity to the portrait. Like everything is so dark that the catch lights pop. Shoot, you guys can probably barely hear me. I'm sorry. Speaking to the microphone. There we go. All right, now you can probably hear me better. So in a shot like this, I think the the catch lights are way more important because everything is so dark. But when everything's bright and and you have so much to look at and in a sense that the whole face is well lit and bright. Um, I don't typically view the catch lights as super important, especially if there's a lot of color in the eye. But um, you always want to see like some edge of it, but I, I just think there's a place for both of them. There should be an adapter in the box. Not sure what you're talking about. Any, uh, oh, I see. You guys are still trying to figure out William's issue with the mag box. The MagMod speed ring is not matching the 8400 Pro bone adapter. Check the website and they say they will work on it. That's weird that it would be a compatibility issue because literally everything that I have that's bones works well for the uh, 8400 Pro and the 8600 Pro. So that's surprising. I would love to see her on a blue or brown background. I'm just feeling the charcoal today. I'm going to keep it like that. I told her to bring neutrals. And, uh, I mean, I like the, the blue splash there. But I'm not, I'm not going to change the background today. I'm feeling... Next time. Know. Yeah, next time. Next time we'll do color. Something crazy. I want to do an outdoor shoot with you. Okay. I feel like you have, you'd have, like, a great energy for outdoor portraits. Okay. All right. We're going back. I like the emotive photos, the dark, like the darker background. Like yes, I like it too. What? I like this one. Yeah, I think it's going to look really good in this outfit too. All right. Bring the left hair back just a little bit so it's not blocking your eye. Try going right under the, almost to the paper there. Yeah. Let's see if that comes across your face a little bit more. Look left. All right. I had everything.
everything I'd like to get. All right. How are you feeling? You want anything good. else that you got that you'd like to capture? Or? No, I feel like it was good. All right. I feel like it was good too. What do you think, YouTube? Yeah, I love this last set. Yeah, I do too. This is like I want this dress. <laughs> very much like Rembrandt lighting. Those at home. Yeah. Very much like Rembrandt lighting, except the the triangle is like so narrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it on that last shot because I just think it looks awesome. Oh no! Have I been in that wrong camera the entire time? Oops. What? Producer mistake on live stream. I'm so sorry, guys. This is the lighting setup that's been going on uh, right now. <laughs> the last comment is, Alex, can you call Rob and tell him that for the last 20 minutes, <laughs> cameras are not following him? Oh boy, we'll cut this one out. But uh, there is the, uh, the lighting setup for everything that we've done for the last 20 minutes, guys. I imagine I lost everybody. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. You can see it now. We're, we're going to show you one more quick sample. Just step in there, just so okay. you guys can see it in action. I'll go through all the lighting setups for you. My A light is this fill light softbox right here. It's at 1 32nd plus 0.3. My B light is the background light. It's 1 16th plus 0.7. And then that is my C light up top, the QT600. Mark II, that is the, uh, yeah, that's at one fourth power. That's acting as my key light. And then below that, D, that's a secondary fill for her lower body. That's at one thirty second power. Camera settings, F8, ISO 100, one two fiftieth of a second. And that's what we've been getting all these shots at the end here. Do one more full length. Because Shannon's ready to go home. Bam. Alright, there. You guys can kind of see it all in action there. I'm so sorry you guys couldn't see anything that was going on right there, but hopefully you can, I like that uh, last one there. Hopefully you can catch it. What'd you say? I like that one. Yeah, the last one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of shows the whole lighting setup. Yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of the key right now. If you want to be a cool photographer, you have to show all these BTS shots <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. oh. Is there anything I can help you with to wrap up? No. No? I'm good. All right. It was a pleasure. So nice to meet you for the first time. Yeah. And uh, definitely want to do more in the future. Actually, yeah. I'm just going to end the live stream real quick and okay. we'll talk real quick. Yeah, no problem. Hey guys, it looks like I lost pretty much everybody with that mistake at the end right there, so I don't have uh, any additional questions, it looks like. Um, my bad. Hopefully, if you guys want to rewatch at the end, you can kind of get the sense of what we were working on for that last 20 minutes and uh, how the lighting setup was for it. Other than that, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to take off, and I'll answer additional questions in the comments. Take it easy, guys.